All right, so good morning. Um, I'm Lindsay Keefe, certified yoga therapist, and with me uh, is my friend Jen Vanderland. She is a mom of three active boy boys. She is the owner of a company called Small Planet, and she makes amazing uh, mm. cleaning products. And she's also a certified yoga therapist and yoga teacher training for prenatal yoga. And what else do you do, Jen? I'm sure I've missed something in there of all the amazing mm. things that you do. <laughs> Um, I teach one-on-ones with people and postnatal. Oh, postnatal so, as well. Yeah, postnatal. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. And one of the reasons I wanted to chat with Jen this morning, um, not only is she incredibly wise um, and hilarious, but I feel like she has a unique perspective on life. And I feel like, you know, you fit the role of, you know, the typical person who is at home with her kids during COVID, you're running your business, life is still happening. How are you coping with all of this? <laughs> <sighs> well, I feel like I'm coping okay. So I think I have good days and bads. And I really notice, like I'm really aware of my state. So I really try to pay attention. So I do know one thing about myself is that when I wake up in the morning, I feel a bit low. And so I have to get myself out of bed and just start doing the things. And then I, I, I feel, I just start to feel more like myself. So that's been helpful noticing that. So what are some of the things that you, that you do? Um, well, I move every day. If you don't mind day. sharing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. I move every day. Um, I try to reach out to friends so that I don't feel alone. Um, every day. One thing that's really, really helping me is writing every day. So making time for creativity. I feel like that's, for me, that's a really key part of this. And that's what, that's my, my writing practice has amped up like a hundred percent. Um, and another thing is I bought some watercolor paints and I started watercolor painting, which is something I've never done before, but it is, it's really cool. And it, just is a way to feed that creativity. That is really awesome. That's mm -hmm. when I moved back from Hong Kong, how that was like seven years ago now. That was one of the things that I did too. I don't know why. I was just like, I'm gonna buy some watercolors. And I just kind of nothing really came out of it, but I just kind of played around with it. But it was a really great way to kind of just express some creativity and mm -hmm. and just have some nice quiet time. <laughs> yeah, it it's really it's fun. It's a bit therapeutic. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and don't we need therapeutic things yeah. right now, for sure. Right? Yeah. 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 So since you're, you know, at home with the kids and doing all the things, what are some of the biggest challenges or obstacles that you're finding since COVID has started? Um, making sure that they do their homework is challenging because I have three boys that are not that interested in school, unfortunately. If I, I'm, I don't know why, but <laughs> so it's a challenge to get them to do their homework. And I find that screen time is a challenge because I know that they shouldn't be on screens so much, but when I have work to do, sometimes that's the best option. And so running two businesses um, while still trying to keep them entertained can be challenging. So I have, to, I've had to let my standards go a little bit and they do, they are on screens a little bit more than normal. And I feel like that's probably pretty common across the board with like people that are still trying to work from home. Um, but we also have to be really gentle with ourselves on that because this is time that like we've never really experienced anything like this, or at least I haven't. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I, I can't like, I don't have kids myself, so I can't imagine you know, trying to balance everything all at once. And I can imagine that, yeah, a lot of, you know, family rules change and coping strategies change and a lot mm -hmm. more. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if like being lenient is, is the right word, but I like how you described it as being like very like just kind of kind and compassionate, not just for yourself, but, you know, the kids are in this too, right? Like they're not just passive bystanders, not standards, <laughs> standard. <laughs> I can't speak this morning. <laughs> Bystanders um, in all of this. So how, how, how are the boys managing everything? 
Well, that's something that like I really have to pay attention to because they've lost a lot, right? They've lost their routine. They've lost contact with their friends, um, sports, all of those things. So to really, I really am trying to make this as fun and as normal as possible and acknowledging like when they're like, oh, this sucks. I'm like, yeah, it does. But look at all these great things that we have. So I'm trying to like acknowledge that it's hard, but we still have to find like little bits of joy throughout what we're doing. And especially, I find it especially hard for my oldest, who's almost 14, because he should be out with his friends, like being a boy, right? Like being, being a teenager and having fun, but he's not. And so that's challenging. And then my youngest, he doesn't really care. He thinks it's awesome. He's like, I never want to go back to school. <laughs> I want to be homeschooled forever. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. So I know that you're really good at noticing, you know, patterns in your life and, you know, noticing what's going on with the boys and what they need and what you need and, and, you know, carving out that time to give that to yourself and to give that to them. Um, For people who are, you know, really like still deep in the struggle and just kind of feel like they're barely surviving and, you know, it takes a lot just to like get through the day. um, What might you suggest or like what tips might you share with them that you found really helpful um, that you've either gained through yoga therapy or other things that you've done in your life. I know you mentioned a few things that you do um, mm-hmm. at the beginning, but like what, what advice might you give to, you know, other parents who are really struggling right now? Um, be kind to yourself and allow yourself to feel all the things like notice, notice what you feel when you feel it and just let it, let it be there. Like acknowledge it like this is hard I feel I feel I don't feel supported I feel alone and then I feel like we just need to like reach out when we need help so um I mentioned a few things that I do but I also meet weekly with a group it's like a group therapy session that we do via zoom and I'm finding that really helpful too just because the group is people that are, we're all going through the same thing. And so it feels like it just really makes you know that you're not alone in this. And that, um, and that's a beautiful thing. Like having a, 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 some community is so important. Um, and then another big thing is like tend to your spirit. So we're not just machines. We're not just bodies going through the world. We're, we're spirits. So we really need to tend to that. And I feel like that's where this creativity comes in maybe writing or um, painting or dancing or whatever it is that makes you feel like alive and helps you move stuff through you. So for some people, that's a really physical way of, of doing things is, is to process and move stuff through, through movement. And for some people, it's like writing or drawing or painting or whatever. So just find that thing that you can do. And yeah, be kind yeah. to yourself. Yeah, no, I love that. I love what you're saying about, you know, letting emotions or feelings like move through you and process it. Um, I just finished reading a book called Burnout, and I can't remember what the authors were. I can look that up. Um, But one of the things they talked about at the very beginning of the book um, was the stress cycle, like completing the stress cycle. So there are stressors and things that cause the stress but we need to deal with like the stress, the emotion, the feeling that's happening in our body. And some of the things they suggested was obviously like exercise and movement, um, positive social interaction. So like reaching out to the people who are in your life that you can talk to, or just, you know, having a positive interaction with the person at the grocery store or smile at the person that you um, are, you pass in the street. Mm -hmm. Um, What were some of the other things? Laughter, laughter was a big one. Like, not just like, he he, I like that social media post, but like, you know, the big belly laughs, like who are your hilarious friends? Like, what is that movie that you love? And it's that, that physical response, that laughter or that joy or that sweating from the exercise that helps us to our body to integrate and process mm-hmm. um, the stress that we're, we're experiencing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And yeah. that, yeah, that's a really, that's a great way to put it. Is we just have to, we have to move through all the stages. We can't just like push everything down and just like soldier on. I feel like we need that time to process. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah I feel like this, like when we push it down, when we ignore it or deny that it's there, it just becomes cum cumulative and it builds up and that's what creates, you know, illness and sickness and mm -hmm. dare I say like some mental health issues, right? Like we can get stuck in that cycle of hopelessness and despair, which can lead to depression or which is depression. Yeah. And so the more that we can, you know, take care of our bodies and, and do little things to help process, yeah, the emotions, like recognize that they're there is okay. Emotions yeah. are meant to be felt, even if it is a little bit uncomfortable. Um, if you can work your way through it, then once you get to the other side, it's going to be a lot more joyful. You'll feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want to say and anything more about that? Because I think. <laughs> I feel like we have to acknowledge that life is not all joy and happiness all the time, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's not. And so just to be okay with that. I think that's there there's so much of this like positive vibes only and stuff that goes around and i feel like that that's not that's not healthy for us to yeah that's an unrealistic expect that. yeah an unrealistic Absolutely. expectation of what life is like mm -hmm. we're all going to struggle maybe on a daily basis maybe something different every day maybe it feels like it's one thing after another but that's life <laughs> yeah and when we can do the little creative things or the movement or the breathing or the laughter or connecting with people that builds our resilience so that we can more easily cope and be with those challenging situations as they yeah. arise, not yeah. when they arise, but as they arise. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when all this is said and done or when, you know, this is over or it kind of evolves into more of a, normal experience where we're not in lockdown 24 seven. How do you want to feel when you come out of this? Um, I want to feel like I did the best I could and that we made it and that my kids are still healthy and happy and we're just, yeah, we're just thriving. I don't want to, I, I feel like the patterns I've noticed is that the people that are just waiting for the world to go back to normal are the ones that are struggling the most. And the ones, the people that are like kind of going with the flow and looking at new creative ways to do things and are, are more accepting of like, this, this is a new way of being and it, we could be here for a while. Those people are, are building the skills and the resiliency that we're gonna need. And, and so, yeah, I've noticed this contrast between like waiting for everything to reopen. It's, we just got to get through this and then being like, okay, this is a new way of being. We're just going to go with it. So I want to be in, like, I am in that group of like, I'm building my resiliency. I'm building my ability to, to witness people, to, to be with myself, to find creative solutions. Um, yeah. And so I feel like that's kind of the different paradigm of, of where we're at. Yeah. So maybe yeah. take a look at what your coping strategies are. Like, are you, are you the one that's just waiting for everything to reopen so everything can go back to the way it was? Or are you like thinking of new solutions and being creative and all that stuff? So yeah. I think that really simplifies it a lot. I, I think it's more complex than that, but that's just a pattern that I've noticed. Yeah. 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 I've seen it too. And I think for the folks, if you identify as the person who's, you know, just kind of bearing down and waiting for things to go back to normal. Um, maybe this is, you know, a reality check or an opportunity to yeah, like reassess mm -hmm. how you are, are coping and maybe taking an opportunity to reach out to a friend or um, a healthcare provider or a yoga teacher or someone that you trust who can maybe, you know, help you come up with some strategies mm -hmm. of like something that you might try differently. Because there's lots of people out there like us who, who want to help and who have some great resources that we can share mm -hmm. um, to help. Because you're not you're not in this alone. <laughs> yeah, we're all we're all taking it one day at a time and trying to figure it out. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to add that we 
you didn't touch on? Um, um, well, there's a few things. So I just, could I just list like the things that yeah. are helpful? So the first is get out of bed, <laughs> right? Get your clothes. Feel, feel all those things that you feel and move. Cry if you something. need to, right? Cry if you need to cry, go for a run, like just feel all those things. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that you have some tools to self-regulate. So whether that be your breath work, whether that's a visualization, whether that's like physical touch, like contract nutrition, we can do that ourselves or we can have do that with someone else. Um, be creative. Listen to your intuition. So I feel like that we've been taught to always give our power away to everybody else. So it's like you go to the doctor and the doctor will tell you what's wrong with you. And so we've really been trained to push away any of our own like intuitive hits. And I feel like coming back into that and, and acknowledging that power that we have is a really great way to start to like open up the channels and be more creative and, and get in touch with like the natural world and with what, what's coming next. So it's, it, I feel like it's a really exciting thing is to tap into that creativity and that intuition because that's where, that's where resiliency comes from. That's where growth comes from. That's where like this, this ability to roll with what's coming next. Right. So yeah, tune into that. And the last thing is to just notice the magic all around you all the time. So little, little like things that may seem unrelated and you're like, Oh, that's really cool. Like just notice those little things and, and take delight in those things. That's my advice. <laughs> I love Delight that. Delight in I the magic. <laughs> I love that so much. I went for a walk with my husband last night. Is we're in Kingston and it's really, really warm and there's a lot of nature all around. So we were going for a walk. I'm like, oh, I wonder what nature we'll see tonight. I'm like, make sure you have your phone so we can take a picture. Yeah. And so we were going for a walk and he was taking a picture of me in front of some lilac trees. And then I saw some movement in the grass. I'm like, oh, it's a snake. It's a snake. Take a picture of the snake. Right. <laughs> freaking out but there was like so much joy and so much excitement in that mm -hmm. moment just because it was yeah I guess it was novel or unexpected and so sometimes just changing our environment like mm -hmm. the simplicity of like going for a walk and seeing what you notice yeah it's it's yeah. powerful yeah that's, yeah, that's really, awesome. really powerful mm -hmm. yeah. uh, well thanks so much for joining me Jen I always love chatting with you I think you have great insights you're so full of wisdom and love and joy just Ooh. talking with you so thank you thank you so much Lindsay yeah thanks all right awesome okay we'll talk again soon okay bye bye <laughs>